It's lovely. It's the Two Johnnies Podcast. The Two Johnnies Podcast. Two Johnnies recording a podcast. Hello, hello, hello. You're welcome to the Two Johnnies Podcast, bringing you all the mayhem and news from the world of the Two Johnnies. I'm Johnny B. And I'm Johnny Smacks. Welcome to episode 53. That's right, we're filming this week's podcast and it'll be online later in the week for your viewing pleasure. On this week's podcast, we discuss the disappearance of Ireland's nightclub scene and what this means for socialising in Ireland. We've had to up his expenses now that we are filming, as well as listening to him. The cult hero of hard man hurling, Noel Furlong, will be here with the news. She beat a lad unconscious during the week and now has a broken hand. (laughs) One of those statements is possibly not true, but Maureen is here. And we attempt to solve a listener's problem in a new segment we like to call Dear Johnny's Do-do-do-do-do-do that's smashing fair play hit you lad. and we round off the podcast as usual with our yurts and dirts of the week yurt, yurt and dirt. dirt before commencing with proceedings matters arising from last week's podcast mr chairman yes mr chairman there was a lot of love spread from the old valentine's lovey episode oh Colum said convince the young one last night that i played drums on your song when i played for the county got the shift out of it oh ye point that's incredible like the drums Pretty random, yeah. We showed that to the lad who actually played drums and when I played for the county because we had a gig during the week and he, he was so annoyed. He was like, I literally stood up to play drums on that song. Could people not tell who I am? Yeah, he was he was absolutely sick. And Kay Noon was in touch. She said, massive shout out to Noel Furlong. Pulled a young one in a nightclub talking about the news. So the news is actually... It's an in now for people. They're, they're pulling people in nightclubs talking about Noel's news. Wow. Jessica from Tyrone said, finished listening to your podcast yesterday and just wanted to weigh in on the conversation on women posting photos of themselves in swimwear, etc. I'm a qualified solicitor, but I also have been a part-time paid model since the age of 22. She's now nearly 30. I had joined Instagram last year and my account was private. Family and friends only. I had started to share some of my modelling work alongside my personal posts and I literally got so much flack and disrespect for it. Like I was a disgrace for being a paid part-time professional model. I shared a variety of my work, bridal fashion, portrait and lingerie. The lingerie images were all very professional, not distasteful at all. The work was for local bridal boutiques, bigger brand lingerie companies, etc. I ended up having to delete my Instagram account. And have only rejoined again this year. A few new friends stopped speaking to me. A few of her friends stopped talking to her. And I started to get follow requests from unknown people. I do agree that it depends. That's hardly surprising. What? Randomers following her? That's weird though. If you're putting up lingerie stuff, you're going to get randomers. Okay. There's definitely randomers following you on Instagram. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't put up lingerie pictures. (laughs) Maybe autumn, Maureen. <laughs> Maybe autumn. I would have tracked your pictures. <laughs> yeah, dogs. Get them numbers up. <laughs> uh, she says, I do agree that it depends on the platform that you're using to display your content or work, but it's such a shame that we live in a society where somebody is judged or undervalued for their career, whether it's part-time, full-time, or if Instagram is your main platform to generate your potential job opportunities. I would value myself as an intelligent and extremely hardworking individual. The fact that I was scorned at for modeling branded laundry, I felt it was an unfair observation of my self-worth. My job is not a reflection on who I am as a person. Ireland is still a very draconian country as a whole, and I don't think it will be, ever be acceptable for a woman to utilize her potential unless it's socially acceptable. She hasn't quoted commas. Um... On a lighter note, I can't wait to see you show on Vicar Street in March. Hey, Woo! the better half got me tickets for Christmas, which earned him extreme browning points. And she says she has a soft spot for Johnny B. And the boyfriend is now growing his hair to get the Johnny B. <laughs> trademark <laughs> flick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Johnny Smacks, you can just, in your yep. own time there. Lad, That's grand. We'll move on straight away from that. <laughs> that uh, so, yeah, we did ask her what did her employer make of it. Yeah. Mm. And she knows the ins and outs and the rules and her account is on private and any of the laundry stuff was actually headless, was it? Yeah, she cropped out her head. So, you know, like fair play to her for being very strong, strong opinions and, you know, standing her ground on what she wanted to do. So, Johnny? Yeah. The, the photos she posted were headless. Yes, the laundry shots. Well, that's a little bit strange, is it? Or? No, people do that. Yeah. 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 If they want to show off the product and then they don't ever want that photo of them to 
Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, come mm. up somewhere. I get it. I just I, I genuinely didn't understand it. I'm just thrown by the fact she fancies you and not me. So, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're not going to hire her as sister? No. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't need one. <laughs> Jesus, I stay talking like that. I probably will though. Yeah. Uh, our next correspondent, SB Fitness, said, "Lads, just listen to the influencer podcast. The fitness industry is the fucking worst for it. Just because some young one is in shape, she's an expert. When I and many others have spent years and thousands of euros trying to educate and build businesses, helping people." She's considered an expert for having a big arse and a few thousand followers. Would you go to a heart surgeon just because he has a working heart? That's a fair point. Man. Yeah. That's a fair point. Man. Do you know what, like, anybody could get up and do like, oh, here's my workout for today. 10 burpees and 10 press-ups. Like, looking fucking... Am- now, I wouldn't, like, you know. <laughs> I don't think anyone would take fitness advice from me, but... So, somebody's in good shape and they start posting their workouts. Yeah, but that doesn't mean... That they're an expert, That yeah. they're an expert, like. That's very true. So, but it, it, that's the team. Is be careful who you take advice from because yeah. Jack says he agrees with us. He says, "I'm not on Facebook or Instagram. How people listen to or believe what they say about a product when they're being paid to push it is crazy." I'm a teacher, and I see how students idolize and copy these people. I was on holidays last year and saw one of those influencers' boyfriends spend 45 minutes trying to take a perfect windswept photo of her on the beach. I had three pints drank in the time. Pure hardship, boy. <laughs> That's the thing. People forget, lads. Boyfriends of Instagram. Those poor fellas rolling around the ground trying to get the perfect angle you want. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't put up with that. Yeah. Not a whole. But, like, when influencers do ads for stuff, it's more brand awareness. It's more that, like, if you're doing an ad and then you're down the shop and be like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that product. It's not like Johnny... Smacks, no, I don't want to use you an example. You're a great guy. I mean... <laughs> I am a horrible person. <laughs> if an influencer starts posting about something, saying, oh, this is brilliant. Oh, like detox tea or something like that. Well, I'm not against that in particular, but like if the follow... If <laughs> Other new, brands are available. <laughs> if they have a new product every week, mm. use a bit of common sense. Yeah. Yeah. Taking a big bag of cash, big money for that, like. Oh, big money, John. Big money, John boy. A different Jack was in touch and he said you have to be careful about posts you like on Instagram. If you're an intermediate hurling if you're in the intermediate hurling panel WhatsApp group, if there's a bit of skin on show, it'll only be seconds until someone has screenshotted and shared it to the group. It mainly started in the group because there's a young one in town and let's call a spade a spade, you'd ride her into battle. But she does be putting up fairly raunchy pictures and if you get caught liking one of them, you may turn off your phone and not train for a few weeks. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Young one puts up a saucy photo and you like it. <laughs> Fellas going to screenshot that and send it into the group. Oh, what are you liking that for, lad? I liked like liked the photo of Una Healy one day and I got sent it like 10 times in my <laughs> in my message request. Then it was like, oh, you liked the picture. I was like, yeah, I did like the picture. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh my god! I wasn't, I wasn't, oh my god! It was so super. The picture he liked it. I really, really liked the picture. <laughs> She's never going to come on the podcast. No, <laughs> no. Um, anonymous wants to know what's your view on boys who are in relationships liking all those provocative pictures of girls, hoops, or them in bikinis, and also constantly following random girls on Insta. These girls might not be influencers. They might be Mary from down the road posing with her hoop in the bedroom mirror. Do you think it's crossing a line in a relationship and slightly embarrassing for both parties or is a follow and a like and no biggie? That's a whole topic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Follow and like is probably no biggie. Like, is it really? You know? Well, t- crossing a line, like the parameters of a relationship have to be set by the people in the relationship. Yeah. What works for me might not work for you. Yeah, but if someone's getting insecure about you liking some other person's photo on Instagram or social media, like, I think that's a bit much. Depends. Could Fellas be- might like to just look at a bit of hoop. <laughs> now and then having a long day in work there mm. I'll have a look at lunchtime Jay, she's a lovely looking bird and yeah back to page 3 digging holes yeah page 3 sure yeah I'd, uh, I'd say it depends on the person like you know but I'd say you know it wouldn't bother me personally if a lad was liking pictures of other ones on Instagram because you know you I'd, just slid his throat and buried him in the garden <laughs> <laughs> well like what I said to you in the WhatsApp group during the week was that you know um you know, dogs bark at cars, but that doesn't mean they're going to end up driving the car. So, you know. I like that one. That's yeah. interesting. We're going to have to take a poll on that. Definitely. Yeah. An absolute genius got in touch to say, just listening to Maura, uh, looking up a lad's Instagram. And what she needs to do is go to his page, but then turn off her internet once all of his pictures have loaded. And he won't get a notification in case you like it that way. Genius. That is genius. You're really happy about that? Like, that's... That's... Is, yeah. That's the ultimate in, in online creeping now that is like you're turning off your internet <laughs> for fear of, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Do people, people actually do that? 
This one does. <laughs> so that's all that matters. <laughs> Dylan from Limerick said, just listen to podcast 42, a great point on how to talk to girls being taught in school. I once met with a girl after texting her for a few weeks, met up with her in a shopping center, but she was with another fella. Being the awkward country reared man I am, instead of confronting the issue, when she turned around, I legged it out the door of the shopping center and never heard from her again. I, I'm not oh. surprised he never heard from her again. What? Dylan, what you should have done there was looked at her, gave her the wink, about half an hour later, text her, said, when you're done with that lad, give me a call. And that would be so smooth. I would have just walked straight over to him like, hey, who's your man? Tell him take a hike. Me and you get our milkshake there, girl. Go no, on. That not work. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have. You'd gone no, to I wouldn't have cry. <laughs> I would have been in the toilet and sobbed my heart out. Rang my mother and explained it to her and asked for advice from me. Yeah. I'm so lonely. Akon just pumping out of a cubicle in the Crescent Shopping Centre. Um, Laura sent us a snap of a bouquet of flowers her mother had received for Valentine's Day from her dad. And her mam said, I knew there was something up when I saw him coming in with these flowers. An hour later, he told me he was after buying another tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Love is alive, lads. Love is alive. There's a bunch of flowers. I'm after spending everything we own there in a Massey Ferguson. <laughs> Uh, a lot of correspondence on songs to make beautiful love to. Dylan said, back in college a year ago, we had a bit of an afters and I had the phone linked via Bluetooth to the housemate speaker. He went into his room with the missus. After about 10 minutes, I heard a bit of a squeak from your one. My phone was still hooked up to the speaker, which he'd brought into his bedroom. Now, he had told me a while ago that he was conceived after a Joe Dolan concert. The only logical thing to do was to play You're Such a Good Looking Woman. Immediate laughter. And after about 10 minutes of Joe Dolan goodness, my housemate walks into my room and says, thank you for the best ride I've ever had in this house. Now, lads, go reconsider your top five. <laughs> that's brilliant. I actually really, I really like that. That's, that's fair funny. You know. Imagine your man's in there. He's kissing your arm. I think, yeah, this is going great. Next thing, Joe Dolan just bursts out over the speaker. <laughs> Poor man conceived it. He was definitely... He was definitely like having sex with her and thinking like, oh, my mother and father conceived me to this song. <laughs> Tell you, it'd be hard to keep the boot on now thinking of that. <laughs> he deserves a mug for keeping the horn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Timo was in touch. He said, well, lad, just listening to the podcast and agree 100%, Kamochi Black and Tan's Welshie remix is my go-to song in the bedroom. The missus wasn't too impressed when it came on after Ed Sheeran, Shape of You. That's a change of direction there fairly fast. A little bit of Ed Sheeran to black, black. Oh, my God. John said, I'm sharing a house with a fella I don't know too well. He had his girlfriend over the other night. His room is the other side of the wall to mine, so I could hear they were watching a movie, and I trying to sleep. As soon as the movie was over, they started playing music. I put on headphones to listen to music because I didn't want to hear what was going on, obviously. After a while, I pulled the headphones off, thinking the man must be done, but no. All I could hear was the hills of Donegal blaring and the two of them going hell for leather. Safe to say I will never listen to that song the same way again. The hills of Donegal. That, I think everybody's probably been in a situation like that, be, be a college or live with my housemates where there's a fair bit of ramming going on. Remember when I first lived in, in Rosemount in Care? Right. I lived with a fella. I'm not going to name him now, but I'll tell you one thing. He didn't often get it. But when he did, lads, I tell you, he, he went like it was his last time. <laughs> and he brought you one home one night at one o'clock. And I swear to God, at 10 to 6 in the morning, I was still awake. And he was still <laughs> gone. And all I could hear was, huh, huh, huh. I had I, 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 I a shoe down the side of the bed. I was throwing my shoes at the wall and all, trying to get him to shut up. He would not shut up. And I had to go, I had to go away, get into my car. I drove to the Topaz in Cashel, sat down and had a breakfast sandwich and, and a cup of tea. And I thought, like, by the time I get back to the house now, he'll be done. Got back into the house, got back into bed. It was around quarter eight now at this stage. It's like that man is absolutely relentless, and you know they're still happily together. Fair play. Yeah, so he obviously he obviously done something right. Uh, Mick was in touch. He said Pitbull and Kesha's song "Timber" gives me nightmares. My friend Walshy, for some reason, explained to me one time that fucking Pitbull. That's how would you make love to that animal, Mister Three or Five? Right? He explained to me one time that he and his ex bird had been riding to that song in his front room, trying to keep rhythm to that song. I can't listen to that song any longer as all it reminds me of is the image of Walshy sewing it into his missus. I'm not surprised. Like. Right, we're going to move on. Yeah. <laughs> Carla said, just in the study hall finishing my foot project and bursts out laughing at your man with a Glanbia tattoo. 
in the middle of Cork City. I don't think 80% of the people here would find it as funny. Some strange look. She had to leave the hall. We must post that on social media. Lad yeah, got it. we'll post it up. The lad that got the Glambia tattoo, he got back in touch and he said he works for Glambia. That's why he has the logo on his chest. That's why he got the logo on his chest. Yeah, I'm not going to get the RT logo yeah. t- t- tattooed on me. Yeah, two, two Johnnies? Yeah, I, no. can, I can't imagine when I used to work in Super Value that I'd have that logo. But who gets the Noah's News mug, which is kindly sponsored by HairyBaby.com, where you can buy loads of two Johnnies merchandise? What That's are we thinking? Joe Dolan, doesn't it? Yeah, Joe Dolan, like that fella, you know. he And he should probably give the mug to his friend who kept the horn, um, <laughs> would be my thing. So, Dylan... Uh, Maura will be in touch with you You're the winner of this week's Nose News Mug Happy days boy Tell you Thanks well, to the boys and Harry Baby For designing the mugs Yeah And um, this lovely thing You'll see behind us When you watch this on video um, What have we been up to this week? The weekly roundup We were in WIT for Rag Week Oh the crack Some crack wasn't it? So the last Like my last Rag Week In, in Waterford was When I was in college there In yeah. 2009 and uh, we were driving in, it was weird. I was saying to Johnny, like, that's the chip, and I used to fall out of every night. And uh, coming back then, 10 years on, playing, playing tunes to 650 students. That's that area um, in Waterford, that pedestrianized area, they've roofed the whole thing. Oh, wow. And it's a mirror. So if you walk into it, it's like it's not quite a square, it's like a big triangle, more like. It's, it's an odd shape. What oh. bars are there that people would know? Just Cas bars. Just there. beyond the Cas bar and that, yeah. yeah. And if you look up, it's a reflection. Whole, it's massive, like wow! It just reminded me of some sort of weird hotel room that you know. <laughs> well, you that know. was a brothel, Mara. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know some hotel rooms have mirrors in the ceilings. Anyway, no, no, I've no, never Mara. been in. No. I, I tell you, I like me hotels, but I've never been in one with a with a, a mirror on the ceiling. Seriously, yeah, in Ireland. No, who, sorry, who, I, I think I should not go who, any further. No, no way, Ireland. you're going to go further. Who? Who are you with in this hotel room? No, 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 no. If no. it was a he. Reverse. He, if, it was a, if it was a he, he's ordered that mirror in that room. <laughs> I can tell you that now. Um, but yeah, there's a big mirror and it's all it's all carded off. But it was some Waterford, gig. yeah, is a good spot for going out. It's kind of very well organized in that there's two streets, like a shape of a T. And all the nightclubs and the chippers are on that junction for the yeah. whole city. So everything you want for a night out is there in, in the one spot. We played in... Project Nightclub yeah Ah oh, some buzz mm. So loud There's about 600 people Yeah 600 650 people there And we done the full band I Some saw. crack Yeah Deadly <laughs> It was actually deadly It was great crack yeah. People up on each other's shoulders Come bananas Singing Junior B All Star And shift when I play People shifting to shift Yeah but it was fair funny that The, the bouncers had like If you were up on someone's shoulders mm. Obviously they couldn't get to you Because there's so many people there So they just had a really strong laser Get yeah. down And they just <laughs> They'd point the laser Like just say There was a fella On another lad's shoulders They'd point it right In your man's eyes Like some hitman Fucking blind him Like until he eventually Was like oh, I'm gonna have to get down There lad Like so But it was brilliant Really enjoyed that Valentine's Day this week uh, For Valentine's night Myself and Smacks Were here decorating the studio <laughs> Everything you can see Yeah we Nailing stuff Not each other Just nailing <laughs> Just oh. nailing stuff in general. What else? What else? Something yeah. Podcast else exclusive. Yeah, podcast exclusive. <laughs> what else did we do on Valentine's Day? But nailing, lads. Um, yeah, that's, that, that was pretty much Ah, uh, we had a heap of meetings. We're up stuff. We're getting ready for the show. The show's again. Yeah, so we're, we're gearing back up to be going back on tour. Uh, Mayo. People of Mayo. We're coming your way as well. That's on the tour. That's the next that's the, the next, next one that isn't sold out, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Mayo. The Royal Theatre in Castle Bar. And so. Vicar Street is nearly gone. Yeah. Ooh. There's only a few tickets left. And what else is... There's, I think there's like 20 tickets left in the Royal Theatre in Waterford as well. And Wexford. Yeah, so lads, get on it. And uh, people of Mayo and up the West. And, and Mara had an eventful week, broke your hand. I did, yeah. Um, Monday morning in the gym, did like my sparring, did really well. And then we're messing, we're doing sprints and there's a lad running towards me. And it was just that, you know, like, so they really shouting, oh, Mara, push that lad out of the way. You know the way lads are just faster than you. And he, so he got to the wall back quicker than I did and he was running back towards me and I was just like oh messing and whatever we connected I broke the metacarpal bone below my index finger so oh Ooh. you were doing running like suicides like wall to wall yeah sprints yeah and, and you tried to push someone out of your way yeah this changes the whole story yeah I thought you were punching a guy 
No. This was it during running. You tried to cheat more. <laughs> yeah. No, I was thick with him for beating me at the sprints. So I was just like, no, in fairness, I was being egged on to do it by the lads yeah, who were doing the squats and whatever. They were doing circuits after we did our seven rounds yeah. sparring. So, yeah, it's like, anyway, I thought it was, I thought it was. Um, and it's properly in shite. Like it's, it's, it's huge. Yeah, it's still swollen. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I was told, uh, no contact sports for six weeks and my MMA fight is in seven weeks. So MMA fight will not be happening, unfortunately. Oh. But and you had a great Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> the broken hand. Yeah. Couldn't do anything at all. Just sat at home. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get a left-handed one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm sure you'll get loads of DMs now, Maura. Yeah. People trying to look after you and stuff like that. Um, we got Maura some. Oh, and you would lose favour. Mm-hmm. There's a present for Maura on the little table outside. It's not that box of recycling, though. It's beside <laughs> that. You didn't have to get me something, lads. It's oh, very nice. Ah, fuck it, you'd hold it against us now if you didn't. <laughs> uh, sure, sure, look, sure, look, it's tax deductible anyway. So. <laughs> Podcast expenses Jesus yeah. oh. no. Mara you're worth it You're worth it Oh my god It's just such a lovely bitch took the price off <laughs> we Just maybe get a shot of it And, and then take it away <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the biggest Fucking bouquet I've ever seen Yeah No way Thank you very much For those lovely flowers right. lads They're no, really Mara. nice Okay we'll move on Topic number one The disappearance Of the nightclub scene the Plaza and Tala in Club 92 in Leopardstown, Lily's Bordello in Grafton Street, the right venue, all these places recently closed. We've decided to discuss if nightclubs are going the way of the dinosaur. Extinct. Extinct, by Dead. Dead as a maggot. Um, so all those are mentioned in Dublin, but I do not think it's just a Dublin thing. No, it's definitely a country thing. Yeah, there used well. to be a nightclub here in our hometown of Care. Um, they changed mm. name every couple of years. It was like 42nd Street, and then it was... T- CH CH yeah Yeah, yeah. One, But it was one of those ones Stuck onto the side of the hotel You know Yeah uh, Nightclub is, is strong Strong way ah, It wasn't nightclub lad. It had a dance floor And a disco ball And lights And yeah. a boombox And the whole lot you <laughs> know? Um, But that closed When there was the last recession came in I only got a brief stint in it It closed probably about 2010 Yeah I moved down in In Yeah in around that time And I went there twice And one of that. them was a phone party and it was it was like I swear to God it brought me back to teenage years like just some, one fella there with a phone cannon <laughs> blown it in lads faces and then like it's it's amazing to see like grown men sliding on their knees just going oh, it's class boy look sliding your knees boy huh? like 30 years of age like working full time just sliding on their knees thinking it's great like and poor shoulders was after getting his eyes done at the time oh yeah I remember he just got like laser therapy done he was like I can't go into foam and your man turned on the foam can like <laughs> Blew the face off And he's like I just got my eyes done <laughs> Jesus I Remember yeah, that Yeah So Were you at that as well Yeah Yeah I probably didn't even know you then But yeah Did you wear the You came in wearing like Brown suede shoes and Yeah the were... rock hard then When I got out <laughs> <laughs> It was like walking out With two paving stones Or something It was cement like By the time I got to Supermax I couldn't really break the shoes In half like But that was That, that shit used to go on Like phone parties And, and beach parties And all that In, in mm. random small town nightclubs Yeah <laughs> Beach party. They had a lot of sand in there one day. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't understand why that works. Like, you know, but teams, teamed things seem to seem to work. But that nightclub's gone now. It's gone. And there used to be two in Clomel. There's only one now. But th- yeah, there used to be one in Ross Gray as well, Grand Hotel. It's gone. Yeah, it was some, some spot. You, you used to get three for a tenner in there. You what? Could, you could get like three <laughs> bottles. So you could get like. <laughs> young ones. <laughs> what? <laughs> young ones. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. Um. <laughs> Three for ten, you get like three vodkas and you just pour them into one glass then and or wicked, whatever you fat can. frogs. Yeah, but people used to be going around like fellas going around with three bottles of wicked like for a tenner. It was, it was a wild place. Seen, Sugar rush lad. I seen some some things going on in that place. I seen the fella from out out of town and that was real kinda you know, out of town people in a small town. It's kinda you're like, Who's 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 your man over there? I don't normally see him here. What brings you here? Because people stand in the same places. Like oh, you could yeah, go to yeah. Grand Hotel four weekends in a row, people would be standing in the same places. Drinking the same drink and everything's still the same. This like came in one and he was like really good at dancing, lads. And like obviously lads in a small town, were like look at that fucking prick is good at dancing. <laughs> he done this spin spin around thing on the ground. Oh yeah, yeah, like break dancing. Yeah, got yeah. a kick straight into the puss. <laughs> <laughs> 
He didn't even get he didn't even get properly around by the time by the time he got three quarters he got a kick into the mouth. Like so, proper like Father Dougal stuff. Yeah, he was like yeah, poof, bang, not like but uh, that was because small town nightclubs like they used to be rough. Like there's no two ways about it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Like the I, most well, I was gonna say the, the most legendary story I've ever heard about a local nightclub was um, Shambles Nightclub in RD. It's now. Oh, what is it? Shambles nightclub. Shambles nightclub. It's now something else, but uh, a lad got refused from uh, from it one night. He was like told, bouncer was like, no, you've had enough, go home. So he went home and he got the tractor and he got the slurry spreader and he came back and he... Uh, <laughs> he, he spread the bouncers. Yeah. Oh. And did like the front of the nightclub, yeah. Oh, did my. he get away with it? No, no, he was brought before court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was an expensive night out. Yeah. But, but they wouldn't be the classiest spots. No, they were rough. Like, you know, like the one in Care now had two bars there was in the nightclub, the main bar. And when you went in on the right hand side, there was a can bar. So only sold cans of board and cans of cider. Yeah, but like. And people the, used to go to a nightclub and drink cans. That was probably a safety measure as well. <laughs> a lot less damage done with a can, like, than, than a pint bottle. Yeah. Okay. Well. But like as you said, they 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 were rough back then at that time a nightclub was like, I'll go down now and listen to Scooter <laughs> for an hour like and go mental and then as sure as you'd have a burger and supermax there'd be a scrap as well. Like. There was always scraps. Scraps were like I swear to god, like you you we used to go and be like, No, wait around long enough now, we'll just see a scrap. We'll like. see a scrap, yeah. Yeah, you would just watch a scrap like. So when all the, when all the Polish and the Euro- European lads moved here, <laughs> they they brought a whole new vibe to it. I remember yeah. remember being in Grants and like everyone had like you know shirts and jeans like, and then <laughs> the boys would come in all dressed in white. <laughs> it's not a red. <laughs> and jeans. the lads would be saying, "Hey, do not take the clothes off from the factory, boys." No, <laughs> and they'd be dressed head to toe. There were some heap of fights for about two or three years in care for that? no reason at all. Like all the all the Eastern European lads and the care lads. Would be Boxing the head off each other <laughs> And no sign to guards No more Do you remember that song Came out like My uh, And the boys yeah. used to wear All white like That's what the boys Were like in Ross Grand And I club like The boys on that video like They could probably Understand the lyrics maybe, Oh Maybe so actually yeah, I never thought of that I remember the nightclub In Cairn now My mate Gonzo uh, Came home from college And he had his, his Backpack in his back mm. And then he met One of the other lads Who was just coming Off the building site And they had a few pints And they're like Mom when we go To the nightclub so they walked over to the nightclub and the bouncer said, you know, you can't come in. You're in your working clothes, covered in cement and <laughs> steel toe cap boots the whole lot. And he said, gone off his bag of clothes. If I get changed, can I come in? They said, yeah, grand. So on the steps of the nightclub, <laughs> he cha- took clothes out of Gonzo's bag, got changed. And then he went. And Gonzo just checked his bag into the locum. Oh my God, that's Perfect. brilliant. That's the classy spots we had. <laughs> but they were, they were classic like nightclub things. But things, things have changed and times have changed as well mm. in that. Funky disco bars. People want different things now. They want to be able to think they're classy and enjoy nice places. And gin, gin. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you if you drank gin in care ten years ago, you were like dowled enough Carnation Street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the one, her and Maggie Thatcher were the only people <laughs> allowed to drink gin. Rita from the cabin. <laughs> yeah. You know, you drank gin and you gave out about the weather and like the price of flans. <laughs> and, and now everyone and his fucking mother is drinking gin and they come in them big fishbowl goblets and they, people want to stand around like we're all in Sex in the City. We're the, not. The this is Brighton in the country. It's not Sex in the City. The last night we had a couple of drinks in Dublin, like I, I, I got a gin like and the barman put in one of those glasses and when Mickey Joe was getting around then I was like here, here he get me a normal glass and he was like I will on me fuck I was like oh no he made you drink it yeah he made me drink it out but I was mortified then yeah, like, people so. want to be cooler now like I remember going up to the door of the nightclub in care and me mate Grinder, his brother Stevie was in me and I was walking up to the door and, and the bouncer was like you can't come in you're wearing a top that says you play for the South under 16 team and, and did it let you in, no? And then Stevie was like, that was last year. <laughs> <laughs> and the man's like, which makes you 17. Oh, my God. Oh, was that, that, fuck, that was two years ago, Johnny, was it? Big Martin's Fruit and Veg. Oh, so God. under 16, hurling team, jumper. Did it, did it let you in? Yeah, of course they let me in. I, co- I, I couldn't get into grants for, for, um, for years because the, the head bouncer in there was our coach under 14. So he knew... By adding it up, what age I was. Okay. Quick maths. And yeah. <laughs> but like the thing back then used to be if your friends were getting an age card, you'd send away for the age card, you'd get a slip back. Mm. And like this is to say Shane Maloney is 18. Like So you'd have that slip for a couple of weeks until you got the yoke. 
Yeah. So bowled his brass one night. I went up and the head bouncer was there in the door. And the cops were there as well. Mm. So I walked up at someone else's slip. Mm. And it was obviously a man. Like, Kieran knew my name and everything. And I walked up and the cops were there and stuff and handed him the slip. And he looked at it and looked at me. And it was either shot me out to the cops now or let me into the nightclub. <laughs> He let me in like, and I was in there, my bottom round, thinking I was the man. And he came in around half an hour later and just lettered me into the arm. I was like, never try that shit again in here. <laughs> so I wasn't allowed back in for like until I was eighteen. Ah. I got that one night over by. I enjoyed it. Absolutely nailing smart off ISIS. <laughs> no, definitely people now, young lads, mm. seem to mind themselves a lot more. Mm. Yeah, there's no people are dressed nicer. They're they are. I I suppose camera phones. Yeah. Have a lot got to do with it. If you make yeah. sure yourself, that's on video somewhere or oh someone God, has a yeah. photo of it. So. People are wary of their gram. Yeah. They want to get nice photos in nice places, locations and all that shit. They don't want to be, oh, here's a video of you, you know, doing angels on the floor <laughs> of Kero's night dog, you know? Doing Rock the Boat. Yeah. Yeah. Rock the Boat's nearly gone, lad. Those days are gone. Jin has killed Rock the Boat. Fuck's sake. Jin has a lot to answer Jean for. Jin has a lot to answer for. But that's the thing. People are minding themselves more. They're minding their reputations more as mm. well. And people are a bit more polished, I think, nowadays. We were saying that we were out with the GA team. And there'd be a load of lads now. to be 18, 19, 20. Hey, but I'm drinking Guinness. Yeah. Trying to take it slow. And look cool. And look cool. Yeah. Mm. Just yeah. back in our day, we were sogging vodka. And Anything you get your hands on. Yeah, really. Like to be Fall down the end of the night. Yeah. Make There's no need for that now. Yeah, no, there is no need for that. But you make sure yourself. Yeah, you're home to the mother then, like sick all over the place. She roaring and bawling. Then the night I went home and knocked down the desktop. She isn't really brought the whole house down. Like, tangled up in it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> they were grim times. Back to nightclubs. The reason they're closing, people are getting cool, right? Cool people, mm-hmm. but they want to go to classy bars. That's all well and good. But then, I think the nightclub thing, down the country, so you go on your night out, you go to your pub, whatever. There's probably going to be a pub in your locality mm. that serves a little bit later than they should. I've never heard of this. <laughs> so then you don't need to go to the nightclub because you're thinking like, right, if I get a bus, if I get a bus or taxi into, into the next town where there's a nightclub. Mm. The big sh- town. Yeah, sure, that'll be over at two o'clock and I'll be home at three. Whereas I could stay here and I might get three or after out of it. Like, yeah. So that would be, that's probably one reason. Mm. Another reason is I think nightclubs are just done better in cities. Yeah. So there's not too many of the classic nightclubs left anymore. Big dance floor, you know, mirrors and mm. chrome and disco balls what? and mad lights. Yeah. Like a lot of the nightclubs now are more late bars with a, a bit in of a dance floor area. Yeah. Like even in Tipperary, Hayes is probably the only like proper like. In Turles. Yeah. Like disco ball, dance floor in the middle, kind of bars around it. O'Keefe's and Clamel. O'Keefe, yeah, but O'Keefe's is even... They have bands on and bands on. Bands and yeah. stuff like that. It's a little bit different. Like, That's you know, it. So. Two nightclubs in the whole county. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I was in a nightclub was in, um, or like a proper nightclub was in Vanity in Carrick Macross, I think maybe two Christmases ago. Yes. Uh, the yeah. names on the nightclubs are Vanity. Vanity. Yes, like Vanity. It, used to, it used to be the Fiddlers and we still call it the Fiddlers, but now it's Vanity Nightclub. Um, and they do that thing of they get like minor celebrities to come along and do that kind of thing. But I was in it and I was just like, oh, I'm so not drunk enough to be here. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like. You're up getting your picture taken with Gaz from Geordie Shore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those places are kind of set up to be, you have to be mouldy. Yeah. You get oh, one yeah. to buy it and you're like, come on, let's do a lap. Oh. <laughs> do a lap at the nightclub. See if you might, you know, if you're single, you might try and bump into some queer on. Like, well, how are you? And she just turns her back and you're like, grand, we'll keep going on the lap. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, not, it's, you know. So it's not just a Dublin thing, these nightclubs closing, like they're closing all over the place. But I think it's not even so much the nightclubs are closing, they're probably closing, but being coming back and reinvented as late bars, disco bars, yeah. mm. not being called nightclubs, you know. Yeah. You look at Limerick, like there's a lot of lot of late bars, mm. disco bars in Limerick that are cool and they're really nice and that's where people want to go. You so see, there's more and more places now like that are over 21s, over 23s. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's mad, like. Reasons for nightclubs closing date naps the cost of alcohol date okay the cost of alcohol that is one thing yeah Yeah, and I know the boom is back and all that yeah but like some places are tending to piss yeah but this year even in KR now after Stephen's Day the whole GA team met up like and went to a house party and I when we started doing that Stephen's Day thing like back in the first boom 10 years ago there'd be no way lads would go to a house party the, the older lads in our team the lads who were working mm. wanted to be in the bookies by 1 o'clock 
they they wanted to be in the pub. They had money to spend on mm. pints. Whereas the lads nowadays, they don't. It's mm. a it's a change in time in that like people are probably being a little bit clever with the money, but then like still you see people dropping a fortune on a night out. Like you know, you, the likes to say it, the one nightclub that is doing a serious trade is probably Coppers. Yeah, in Dublin. Yeah, and if you're going in there, you're going to drop serious money because it is it's pricey enough. Mm. You know. So it's a city center location. Yeah, but th- yeah, and to be fair, like you don't mind paying for it in there. Yeah, like, no, it's, it is good. Speaking of date naps, lad, date naps can't compete with coppers. <laughs> no, no. You if, if you're on Tinder and plenty of fish and you catch the phone and fuck it out the window. Yeah, is. just get yourself to coppers. Like I'm telling you, there's there's someone there for everyone. <laughs> People are leading healthier lives too. Definitely, they're looking after themselves. They want the six packs. They want to look good on the Instagram. The whole lot. They're not going to be going out the weekend. Getting absolutely blot or eating two kebabs on the way home, you know, once in a while they'll probably do that. Yeah, not as much. I think the whole, probably the, we've had a whole 10 years of Love Island and Geordie Shore and all these lads looking absolutely ripped, getting fake hands and all that. Now, you wouldn't see too much of that down in Tipperary. But definitely, lads are minding themselves and trying to be healthier. They don't want to go as early. They don't want to drink as much. They don't want to be eating 10 burgers like we used to. Yeah. When I was 20, 20 21, like started going out, 18, 19. You didn't drink whatever you wanted. There was no thinking about your figure, like. Yeah. Nobody yeah. I knew. Yeah, you go out and drink a few of pints and then you'd go in and have a pizza and chips on the way home. And, and full airs the next morning. Yeah, nothing about it. Like, ten times... And I think that's the big thing in that this whole nightclub scene has changed. It's purely time. Ten years ago, scooter, a scrap. Now, I want to sit in Sophie's swing and look deadly <laughs> and get a load of likes off everybody on Instagram it's do pure, a boomerang <laughs> yeah a boomerang on a swing in Sophie's like I'd say every young one I'd say if there's 90% of Irish young ones uh, uh, and like, to be fair there's actually if, if, you, if you look hard enough you'll find a photo of me on that swing well. <laughs> um, we, have a, we have a quote here from the managing director of Lemon and Duke which is on Grafton Street in Dublin and the venue used to be a nightclub but they've changed um, perspective so I have the quote here it's the late night club scene is coming to an end and it's become too risky to have a dance floor. Our closing time is now around one thirty, whereas we used to stay open later. If you're staying open past one thirty, you're leaving yourself open to trouble, he told the Irish Independent. Around eight years ago, we had a trip and fall case at one of the venues I manage and it caused our insurance to go through the roof. The guy had a pre-existing injury. It took five years for the case to go through the courts. Ended up settling on the day in the high court. That meant our insurance was going up every year as the cost of it was sitting on the premium. That's probably a, a good enough reason to, to not have a nightclub. When, when I used to play in the wedding band years ago, I once played in a hotel where I had one of those lighty uppy dance floors. Mm. Do you know what I mean? With the sparkles on yeah. it. And there was a lad sitting beside it. A member of staff. With a piece of paper in his hand. And I was like, after the gig, I went over to him and was like, what mm. are you doing? Because <laughs> there was tea and coffee out. And I was like, are you monitoring how many cups of tea is or what like? And he said, no, we had a woman fall on the dance floor. Mm. So now it's my job to sit beside the dance floor for the whole night. And if somebody comes on with a drink in their hand or without their shoes on, I have to go up and say, whatever, please don't do that. Yeah. And if they don't listen to me, I write it in the book and I let them dance. I'm not a bouncer. Yeah. But it's in the book. So at least they can say that yeah. they can cover themselves. But nobody could do the job for more than an hour because they went insane. <laughs> <laughs> but lads Irish lads Like are, are bad old dancers Oh yeah And the dance floor works When you're langers mm. But if you're not as drunk You're not gonna dance Because most Irish lads Can't dance Yeah Yeah yeah, 100% But from a business point of view That makes sense As to why nightclubs Are closed mm. Wouldn't it be easier Have a bar Get people in early mm. People are Like people are really Spending more in bars Aren't yeah. they But if you make the bar classy Then you can add a euro On every drink Yeah yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's a, probably a better business model having a yeah. bar in a nightclub, definitely, and probably less overheads. I don't know if we want to talk about this, but like, when I was doing my apprenticeship, going out midweek nights and all in Foss and Waterford, like going to nightclubs, it's, it's tunes. There used to be loads, loads of lads taking yokes. Mm. You'd uh, you'd see lads tune the jaw off themselves walking down the street, and mm. maybe it's just we don't go to those kind of places. But I don't <laughs> see that anymore. No, yeah. I, I don't hear that either. I wouldn't know anybody that would... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I pro- some people maybe I would know that would have been of that scene. They might revisit that scene when they go to, like, a music festival or something like that. But they wouldn't be, you know, yeah. doing yeah, it every yeah. weekend. So I think or... that as well has gone out of fashion, along with that kind of music. Yeah. Along with the nightclub. Is it all yeah, connected? It's all, it's all cool music. Like, we went to Zico one night and it was all, like, cool, like, Drake music, 50 Cent stuff. Like, I... I, I 
I felt like it was in a different country, to be honest. But we were just roaring Mickey Joe Hart at the yeah. DJ for an hour. <laughs> he wasn't getting it. He wasn't getting it. In fairness, now you're going as kind of cool music like that, whereas it was dance yeah. music. Now I'm sure there's still raves and stuff out there. But are we losing a part of our culture? Is this is this a part of the Irish culture, or are you quite happy for it to go this way and we all be cool? I don't. But you can still find the spots, like you know. Yeah, I don't. I don't have strong opinions on it really. Like the Irish nightclub scene I don't think has quite the heritage that yeah, yeah. other countries like when I was in Copenhagen they have a big techno scene in the meatpacking yeah. district like it's hardcore mm. dance like we don't have a, a real scene of nightclubs you weren't that teenage just going shin on lad yeah I suppose I think it just happened everything changes with new generation like my parents generation would have been like dance halls like you know yeah. and show bands well no probably my parents parents generation you know? no, but I want to see the show bands come back yeah, yeah. I'd be all for that <laughs> we'd go jiving like. we'd go to one of the jiving nights there's more fucking jiving going bring on mind your scooter jive. bring back the jiving bring back the jiving how often would you go to a night uh, I wouldn't probably go that often yeah. Maybe the odd appearance in coppers. Yeah, coppers would be Damn. the only nightclub that I would really go to because I like the music and yeah. I like the playlist. Is Crystal a nightclub? It's called like Crystal Nightclub, right? I've never seen a dance floor. People do dance on the corridor kind of area, you know, the, the biggest opening space, the kind of outdoor place. Yeah, but even it's not a nightclub in the kind of every small country town. Yeah, yeah, nightclub, yeah, yeah, nightclub. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not the classic. Okay. Cheesy mirrors and chrome yeah. and smoke. Because I thought I was missing a part in there. I was like, "Where's the Where's the haze as part of this?" <laughs> <laughs> I never got it. We don't go to nightclubs that much. We're going to have to start. Maybe we should just plan a nightclub. No man. I, to us, like when, we, when I was nineteen, it'd be you'd be drinking at home and then go to the nightclub at midnight. Yeah. Mm. Now we want to go early and have a few pints at the chat. Yeah, I'm nearly ready to go home by twelve o'clock. To be honest, <laughs> nearly, <laughs> nearly, nearly, <laughs> nearly never. Right, that's it, lads. We leave it there. Nightclubs. We're, all this talk about nightclubs, I think we just go on our own. We just go out. Right, let's head. Let's go. <laughs> He's been busy putting the junior B team through their paces this week. Yeah. He's back. He's back in charge of the junior Bs. So we have to pay him a fortune now because we're obviously videoing this as well. But it's your favourite time of the week. It's time for Noel Furlong. And it's time for Noel's News. Noel's News. It's Noel's News. I know, for that. Oh, well, no, it's it's, uh, it's good to have you here. Do you like the new the new studio, the new layout? I like the photo of me. Yeah, do you like it? From Bar Fury. Yeah, a couple of greats on the wall there. Yeah, drank many a pint with him. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to do you want to pop on your headphones there? No. <laughs> Hang on. What Jesus? <laughs> Fuck it, I'm all over the place. <laughs> Um, what did you say in, in, in my introduction there? I'm going over to Junior B's. Yeah, I have that you were putting I, the lads through their paces. Are you trying to get back in, yeah? No, no, no. I, I'm you, not playing you Junior You'd have B's. a lot of work to do to get back on my team. Do right? Not, yeah. Why? Didn't like to cut your jib last year. <laughs> <laughs> my jib. Fact, yeah. Okay. Want to get a new jib? <laughs> um, I haven't confirmed that I'm taking over to Junior B's yet. Oh, I thought that was that was all sorts. No, we don't meet until the end of May. Okay. Where, yeah. do, where do you meet? In the Shamrock. <laughs> and then we'll have a think about the future. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of news. Lovely. Okay, plot twist. Yep. Yeah. Um, what is the capital of India? Don't say Jalfrezi. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere you go every day. Where do you go every day? Bed. Delhi. De <laughs> <laughs> there were no delis in my day, you know. No? No, Jesus. You went into a shop and asked for lettuce. You'd be put in the county home. <laughs> <laughs> fact. That's a fact. Fact. Now, out in India, they don't do God. They don't have God like we have. They have their own thing. They call it Hindu. Hindu. Yeah? It's, uh, <laughs> Hindu. Right? They, they, they don't be Catholics or Protestants or nothing. They're Hindu. <laughs> and in, instead of God, they don't do God. They have divas, as they call them. Right? Huh. Now, speaking of fucking divas, Parik brought home a new young one. And she came into the house and Cameron loved her tea. And she said, 
I'll have two sugars in my tea. Said you think you're fucking Tina Turner? <laughs> I said you can Tina Turner on that skinny little arse and get out. <laughs> fucking cheeky man. Um, now on the topic of young ones and young lads, in India they only started doing Valentine's Day recently. Okay. Because Valentine, is Christian, and yeah. they're Hindu. We were talking about that prick Valentine last week. So, <laughs> in the college, in Delhi, there was a tree, and on Valentine's Day. They meet up and they have a celebration at the tree, all the Hindus. And they'd be celebrating. <laughs> they'd be celebrating romance and love and desire. Tis like Liz and Verna, but without the cocaine. <laughs> what? I hear they're all gone mad in that now. Go away. Cocaine. All the young people. I never took it now. No? No, there used to be lads sogging it at the plowing match now, right? You sure? Fucking hell, yeah. Like, you're supposed to give your right G up. <laughs> Tim Casey took a belt for one day. He was supposed to play a line from point A to point B. He fucking went straight through. He wrote his name in the field of turnips <laughs> and he ended up in Galbally. <laughs> <laughs> Completely naked. <laughs> huh? 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 So, I don't go at it at all now. But in India, the male students, they go up to the tree. And they tie, uh, I don't want to say it now, but you know the the, the suitcase for your Mickey. The condom. <laughs> condom. That's it, yeah. That, that was a dirty word in, in my house when I was growing up. You never used them? No, well, my father didn't believe in it. No? No, and he passed that belief onto his 29 children. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they, they tie a condom onto the tree. Under the tree, right? The lads. And they do sing a song and they do a dance. And this is supposed to help them lose their virginity within the next six months. Jesus. In fact, this is a tradition now. And they hang a picture of some fine Indian one up on the tree. We usually be um, an actress or such like from Bollywood. And they, they pray to her. And they quote, there's one of these divas, they call her. And this is a quote, the hot and sexy goddess. Okay? Mary Kendi job, right? <laughs> and they have tea and they have rice and they have their crack. Now, India be very conservative. Sex before marriage now would still be taboo. You, you shouldn't be at it. But lads believe only divine intervention will get them to jump. So that's why they, they pray to the tree. But I say the Divine the Kama Sutra, what they want is fucking Marty Whelan. <laughs> That, that man, he's seen more holes in the second-hand airport. Okay? <laughs> That's the fucking kind of guidance they want. No, never mind. <laughs> fucking to view. So, anyway. More holes than the second. There's a female student going to the college down there. Uh, her name is Asahi Data. And she wants the fe festival stopped. She says, and this is a quote, she says, it's a hyper-masculine, aggressive environment. Why, well, she's never been thought of dancing in Kill Ross. <laughs> <laughs> there be fucking baldy farmers from Emily and Capo White and they be fucking stepping over each other to get a jive off a rich fucking widow. Huh? 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 So, now the lads organising this the festival abroad in India, the Hindus, they have included women and the gay lads and anyone. <laughs> you can't say that again. Well, they, I, have it, I have it in turn the book. They have included women and gays and lesbians, the whole lot. They are, they are included in, in the celebration now as well. Proper order. Yeah, anybody who wants to ride, these boys will they all pray together. And there's like a challenge match. They want everyone to get a game. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but the two the two sides are currently locked in deadlock. <laughs> and they're trying to argue now, will the festival, will it continue? Or will it get the boot? So that's India. India, all the Hindus. So, now, off to Nazi Germany. <laughs> Not to be confused with Nazi Offaly. <laughs> it turns out they weren't neo-Nazis. 
there was just a shocking outbreak of nits in Tullamore. <laughs> and they all had shaved the head. <laughs> and the bomber jackets and Doc Martens was just for style. <laughs> okay, now I say Nazi Germany because we're throwing it back a bit here. In the German, well, they're, not, they're, not, they're no longer Nazis, obviously, they're, they're not a better bunch, in fairness to the Germans. In the German state of Thuringia, we'll go with that, they have found a load of church bells in churches with big, nasty, nasty, says I, big Nazi swastikas on them. And their bells have been ringing away since World War II. And no one knew the difference. Fucking bell is a bell. Yeah. And they were down the ground and the bell was up in the tower. Yeah. So <clears throat> people have been hearing about these Nazi bells. And one lad, he climbed up the whole tower with a mini grinder. And didn't he grind the fucking swastika after it? Okay. And they want to sort this out because they said there's a thing called neo-Nazi tourism. Where lads who are into it would pay big money to see the bells. Would you believe that? Lads yes. would actually pay money to see these. Which is gas because myself and Patsy Donegan are... <laughs> Or just after finding one down the, ch- <laughs> down the chapel. <laughs> no. In our own little village. And you, you can view it for just 50 bob. <laughs> Any neo-Nazis listening, you can contact Johnny Stacks on the podcast if you want to view it. Now, you can't come too close or you'll see where Patsy welded it. <laughs> <laughs> but the... Um, Get in touch about the bell down the chapel. <laughs> now, in Germany, the government have said to the churches, you fucking sort this out. Nothing to do with us. It's your, your bells. And the protesters want to melt it down. Melt down the bells. Now, if the people of Germany are listening, I know a man in a van. He'll melt it down and pass it around. Cash. No bother. Did they ever introduce it to him? Who? Mike in the van. No. No. Fucking Mike's gas man. Mike is originally from Bile, above in County Roscommon. Now, he knows by now, but back in 1941, Mike was over in Germany delivering turf, right? <laughs> and he came across these boys, and they were trying to get away from the Gestapo, right? Because they were Jews. And, and Hitler was going stone mad. He was going fucking stone mad. They wanted to get loose. They wanted to get out. <laughs> they wanted to get out. So Mike, he now rigid Larry at the time, and he broke down outside Dusseldorf. And the boys helped him fix up the lorry. And he said, boys, you want to hop in the back of the van? And I'll get you out. I said, thanks, we get you loose, right? So where did he bring the boys? Only back to Byland County, I was coming. And they heard a bit of Kaylee music. And didn't they start another band? And that's the band, Mike and the Mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> And they were on the run for years afterwards. And that's why they wrote that song. Looking back over my shoulder. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. I'm fairly sure that's not a fact. That's a fact. That's where Mike and the mechanics came from now. That's where they got close. So that's Turingia in Germany. And what will they do with the Nazi bells? Even Margaret and the Shamrock don't know. <laughs> and she seems to know fucking everything that's going on. So, uh, that's Germany for you. Um, just, I was listening to your conversation there earlier. You're talking about nightclubs. Yeah. Well, it's funny you should say that because during the week, I had a dream. I was in the Kalinan end of Simple Stadium watching the Monster Final. And myself and St. Patrick were drinking cans of cider. <laughs> what? And St. Patrick said to me in the dream, he said, Noel, open up the disco. <laughs> Give people the disco. In town, there used to be another disco beside the hotel. Yeah. And it's closed. Well, I'm thinking of reopening the disco. Go away. Yeah, I'm going to call it the disco. <laughs> Original, okay? yeah. Myself and John Brady. I was talking to John. You know John? <laughs> we're Brady of the cash. He knows how to make it. I know how how to enter it. And I said to him, Brady, the first thing we need is a fucking steamy barmaid. Right? <laughs> steamy. <laughs> and I have one. She's from Cashel. 
So the boys won't know her. And fuck it, she'd put a horn in a heifer. Now this one, where do you see her, right? Head of security, Jumbo has it. <laughs> He's a big man. He's a big man. <laughs> He's a big man. And his brother is with him. Her brother, Tiny Tim. <laughs> He's a small man. You have the small man before the big man can go. <laughs> you have to say it again. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> so the hotel were delighted when they heard. They they wanted this guy. They were delighted with the rent. Now they haven't fucking gotten it yet, but you know. <laughs> um, and we're going to get the crowds in. We're going to get the crowds in for the official opening. I have Anne Doyle coming down. Anne Doyle. Yeah. Wow. Oh, she was a fair bit of biscuit that one. <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> a fair bit of biscuit. So and and I have, I went all out and I, I, <laughs> I went all out and I'm after getting. My heart's beating. Man. <laughs> And after getting a Christa Borg in person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm after getting a Christa Borg in person. Now, <laughs> now, the thing is, he don't sing. He don't sing. <laughs> but he's the fucking head off. <laughs> He don't sing a word, but he's the fucking head off Christopher. Oh, God. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope you're, I hope you're still with us. <laughs> ah, fuck. Um, and in the following week, uh, Charlie Lansbury is doing his DJ. <laughs> Charlie Lansbury's doing a DJ set. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have a meet and greet with Twink. Uh, it's going to be great. And then we're doing a special offer on Fat Frogs. I don't know what they are, but you get two for tenner. <sighs> Uh, vodka, buy two, third one free. Uh, Guinness, drink ten, fall down. <laughs> and you're barred here too. The two Jimmys. <laughs> Fuck, you don't want to give up the wrong impression. Have you around the place? Not that kind of nightclub. Um, so that's my news for the week now. Thank you, Noel. I have, uh, I have my session must go every doctor's appointment. What, what's wrong? Fucking eyesight has gone very bad. Yeah? Yeah. On the way in, I hit four lads. <laughs> And, and fucking one of them is bicycle is stuck in the roof like a <laughs> No, thanks a million. What the fucking I must call up to Mike and the mechanics as well. <laughs> yeah, put out that bike. All right, go on, good luck. See you there. Alright, she typed the running order out with one hand. Fair play to her Maura, you're here. What's the mystery topic? Um, so maybe it was the Valentine sphere, or maybe it was the fact that I was off work with a broken hand, but I decided to rejoin Tinder. Ooh. <laughs> um, now I did it at home when I was in Mead, so I actually got re- for, like way more matches that are my type. Um, I found that like in Dublin, lads within my radius like work in IT or into poetry, so not my type. So, but um, some of the more interesting Tinder bios I've seen: Dan thirty nine. Engineer by day, Mr. Loverman by night. Um, <laughs> Go on. Mark 31. Uh, just looking for a bit of fun. No strings attached. Easy going, just up for a laugh. And his profile picture was a shot of his crotch. Um, so that was <laughs> nice. No way. Yeah. And the Tinder buyer. Oh, yeah. And the Tinder bio that I'd happily break my other hand for uh, in order to be able to punch this guy in the jaw. Shane 30. Feminist on the streets, misogynist between the sheets. <laughs> for fuck's sake. It's a lot of big words for Tinder bio, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. 
Is he expecting to pull anyone out of this? Like, Jesus. I don't know, but I'm sure he's on a guard of watch list. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, one of the more interesting I ha- uh, chats I had was with Damien. So uh, he messaged... So Damien, if you're listening. <laughs> Damien, yeah. Uh, he said, hey, I replied back, ho. Uh, see what I did there? And then he said, so Damien... Lumineers. Is, yes. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was really clever. And then he replied... He, bear in mind he's 25 and I'm not going to say what age I am he goes um, am I not too young for you and I was just like right okay sorry <laughs> yeah, I swiped nice because I thought you'd good hair and then he goes alright no worries and then so that was uh, that was on Wednesday at 15.37 then Wednesday night at 21.51 I got a message from Damien saying I want you uh, <laughs> I replied how drunk are you he said I'm in bed I replied um, I was just like right I, I just I'll be out. over in 10 minutes I was having a bit of a laugh this. I go uh, I don't do sexting with strangers uh, Knock on Pornhub lad uh, Then he replied But sure you're not on Pornhub um, I was like Apologies for never getting into amateur porn uh, <laughs> And then he replied You'd swear I was a child I was like First off like <laughs> yeah, I'd be very much in trouble If you were replied to <laughs> And then I just said Aren't most men just big kids And then he said back I've had sex with more women your age Than my own I was like Fair play to you <laughs> Play to you, Damien. Oh my god! And so I was, I, I was curious. I said, "And how do women my age compare to those the same age as you?" And he replied, "They fucking loved it." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I said, "Well, I said, well, most women do love sex." And he's like, "Yeah, but yeah, a young fit man, uh, women your age love my guys my age." I was like, "Right." Uh, so I just said to him, where is this going? He goes, you tell me. Uh, I said, it's going nowhere, but this is a fun conversation. And then he replied twice. Oh, please. I want you so in my bed so badly. So, um, yeah. So that was fun. Fair play. Wow. <laughs> Marry that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Damien, thanks for that chat. So um, the Tinder Chronicles are coming back. Yeah. There was another guy uh, named Aaron. And I replied with a killer opening line saying, uh, I hope your surname is Jumper. And nobody had ever used that line at him before. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's a good one. It's a good, yeah, he liked that. Um, then there was Warren, the personal trainer. Uh, he's a very nice chat too. So I had him on Snapchat. Good conversation. And then that night at around 11 p.m. In came the shirtless selfie of him in bed with the line, what are you doing? It's like, oh, lad. Whoa. Yeah. So that was like not going to go anywhere. Um, Very forward. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, this is the crack. Like, <clears throat> so um, then there was Enda, uh, who was just, I don't know, maybe the pain medication was, but he asked me for his number, so he, for my number, so he could message me on WhatsApp. So that was grand. So I sent, uh, whatever. I, I normally wouldn't do that. So I sent him, uh, yeah, then he WhatsApped me and he asked me for a full length picture of myself. So <laughs> I was like, bit weird but I was like so I sent him a video of me doing tumbles at the gym uh, I thought that was very funny but then he asked for more photos and I found that a little like I found that really weird so I was just like can you not just go creep on my insta like a regular yeah. person and he didn't find that funny or the tumbling video uh, video funny he was just like he just wanted photos so I was like good luck with that you weirdo that's a bit weird um, Fuck, I'm never going to come to meet again yeah <laughs> Jesus more yeah uh, and then now the weird does go both ways because one nice lad I was messaging told me that a girl he matched with had asked him to come have a threesome with her and her boyfriend so like the weird there's weird I'm not saying that the there's all oh, guys are weird it's like a bear trap would you would you would you offer that nah yeah it's a bit weird isn't it yeah, yeah. but the weirdest one now the weirdest one that I've had okay right is uh Paul I don't know how somehow I matched with him, right? He is a US Marine. So I was like, it's some CIA, some sort yeah, of thing. See, Maura, the, the Yanks have their um, radio set worldwide. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. So, so anyway, I matched with him anyways. Good luck in that. And remember, having the crack now, he said, and he just said, oh, I was like, what are you doing? He's like, he's now on a second deployment. And I asked him, where are you on your deployment? Uh, and he said, um, Damascus, Syria. And it's a really horrible service over here, baby. So I was like, <laughs> right. So I asked him, like, so how is it dangerous? So I asked him, like, is it dangerous over there in Damascus? And he replied, yes, baby, but we've got each other. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I, now, maybe it's just like I'm scared to unmatch Paul because uh, maybe it's why I've just watched too much Platoon or something like that. <laughs> but I feel that, like, if I hurt Paul's feelings, 
some poor thing over in Damascus is going to get he's blowing some shit up <laughs> AK-47 in yeah so that was fairly weird now so right but you're in Drum Connors <clears throat> yeah in Mead yes and you're matching <laughs> maybe, maybe you shouldn't say okay. that okay <laughs> you're in deep in Mead <laughs> okay. right yeah, yeah. and you're matching I don't know how I matched a lad in Damascus but women in Damascus Stay away from a lad called Paul, okay, if you do meet him. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, but I just want to say, I'll finish this up by saying, I do have a date. I did. Hey! But that's, I like this guy. Pre-Tinder? No, 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 I like this guy. I really started liking this guy after he told me the number of cows that he's milking at the minute. I was like. Oh. Yeah, so I think my priorities might be slightly wrong, but yeah, Yeah. Tinder, Tinder, that's Tinder for you lads. When's, When's the date? Tomorrow. You want to give me good milk? <laughs> 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 on that one, right, Mario? You're uh, back on Tinder. Like, does the US Army have some sort of military, like, spy Tinder. net Tinder? Yeah. That they can match people worldwide. Oh, it's weird. It was very weird, yeah. Because he said that he was like 56 kilometers away from me. So I was like, Just like, Jim Connors isn't that close <laughs> to Syria, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it is I, in some ways. I know it's wild up there, but Jesus Christ. Right, Mara, you might keep us up to date so it's your Tinder exploits. Yes. Okay, and if anyone can explain that. Yeah, if anybody can actually tell us why. A few tech heads listen. Oh, come on. Yeah, some of the boys up in Silicon Valley, right? Let us know. Get on the phone. Let us know what the crack is. Don't forget to rate, review, and tell your friends about the Two Johnny's podcast. And use the hashtag Two Johnny's Pod. That's number two and Johnny's Pod to get in touch with us. And you can also email us at podcast at the two Johnny's dot IE. There you go. It's as simple as that. Keep and, spreading uh, the good word. And follow us on Instagram. Do. It's good crack. It's yeah. good content as well. Fantastic, actually. Right, topic number two. So, Margaret in Longford. This is a Dear Johnny segment now, right? We're going to solve all the problems. Dear Johnny's. You've seen how well it went on the Late Late Show? There you go. Yeah. So, this came in from Margaret in Longford, and she said, Dick pics keep sliding into my DMs. On Instagram and on my other social media, why is it acceptable for guys to send on dick pics? Why do guys send dick pics to my phone? That was dick pics by <laughs> Charlie Lansbury. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a bit of Richie Kavanagh, he did a on oh, me mother sent dick pics and me father's in the yard. <laughs> what the hell? Why do lads send? Just before we go any further now, we did an Instagram poll when Maura right in. It's totally unconnected. I just, we just thought of it. <laughs> Wait. Um, ladies, have you ever received a dick pic? And at the time of this, we've had about six or 7,000 votes mm. and it's about 50-50. Yeah. Girls have received dick pics. And a lot of people messaged us to say yes and they were totally unsolicited. They were from randomers. My theory... Are, are some of these, or a proportion of these, not just like, you know, Russian gangs, robots? Like when I'm on Snapchat, I, I get like these, you know, titty videos. Oh, subscribe to my channel. But it's like, that's this is like blackmail. They want you to send something back. Then they'll screenshot it and say like, send us your money or we'll send us all your contacts. Give us your fucking money. Bob Geldof style. Give us your fucking money. <laughs> there was a thing about, on, about that on primetime. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. what like... Most of these seem to be real though From what we're hearing The feedback we're getting off women Yeah They're not just robot dicks They're like actual lads <laughs> Robot cock um, <laughs> I, this, is, this is crazy I don't understand how a random fella Will just send a, a picture of a dick to a girl I, I don't, don't get it yeah. If you're sexting And she's saying like Oh Jesus I'm fucking A Medford or something like You know or, <laughs> Your sexy talk is on real. Yeah, it's and Jesus, and baby, I'm pure mad for <laughs> here. <laughs> and like you know, you take back so my blah blah blah, and then it starts getting saucy, and then you're sexting, and I can see then how naked pictures and stuff will be sent to each other. Like you know, that's yeah. If there's a bit of distance, whatever. But a dick pic is not an icebreaker, like. Yeah, you wouldn't be like, "How are you?" Bang. <laughs> Here's me dick. Have a look at that. To take that for a walk, love. Like I, I don't, I don't understand that. But yeah, I, I don't think there's there's a, a genital in the world that is a good opener. No, nor do I think there's a camera with a function good enough to make my <laughs> penis look good on a photo. Um, no slap on a few filters there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to put your best foot forward and we don't have a foot. So. <laughs> yeah, jeez, we don't even have a half foot. <laughs> put your best half foot forward. Um, lads, 
if, if you're listening to this and you're like, what, I, I send dick pics, you know, don't. Yeah, you should, be, you should be ashamed. That's the big yourself. thing we want you to take away from this. If I was sending them, I'd have to get a stunt cock. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like a fake willy like or something. And be yeah. like, oh yeah, there it is, there now. It's fucking eight foot long. It's like you, a Christmas tree. Mark Wahlberg had one in Boogie Nights. Did he? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's watch that again. And does that mean he's like a small willy then in real life? It, well, not a porn industry sta- standard size cock, I would imagine. Cause yeah. Would, yeah. There you go. But it's like if we were to star in a movie about American football. <laughs> like we're, we're okay, but we're not like American football standard. Yeah. Same with Mark Wahlberg. He's probably got a grand, yo, grand handy one. Yeah. Does the job around, you know what I mean, around Boston. <laughs> <laughs> back back to these dick pics. Let's get back to the dicks. Have you ever received any dick pics, Maura? Yeah, I had, um, I like the first time I joined Tinder, I was pure innocent. I had like my uh, Snapchat handle on my Instagram ah. profile and got a uh, queer few funny pictures. And the weirdest dick Oh, is, is Instagram linked to your Tinder? Uh, Instagram is not linked to my Tinder. No, not cur- not my current Tinder account. It previously was. But oh, yeah. so lads would have met you on Tinder, got onto your Instagram. Yeah, but saw it, your Snapchat name. Yeah, that's oh, no, pe- no, no, pe- no, no. They would have. Uh, I had my Snapchat on my Tinder bio. Oh, your Tinder bio. My Tinder bio. Sorry, I didn't explain that very well. But uh, the weirdest photo I ever got was a lad's cock and a double, and him ho- holding his cock and him holding a double A battery next to it. <laughs> Just for reference, for size. <laughs> yeah, but like. But a double A battery isn't big. Yeah, and neither was his cock. Like. That'd be like me with a fun size Mars bar. <laughs> just, just going, this is actually a big Mars bar. Like, cause it's not fun size. Scale model. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Four then to I was, one. I was like, I'm going to have to reply to this. I was like, why the battery land? And he just replied, I don't know. I was like, <laughs> what an absolute <sighs> tulip that fella yeah. is. Um, I've received dick pics. Yeah, me too. Yeah, on Snapchat. Um, you more than me. I've got a few It's fucking What are they thinking Like I don't Like First of all I'm not gay And if I was It still wouldn't be acceptable For a fella to send yeah. A picture of his knob to me Like you know I, I don't know what Lads are hoping to achieve No like Do they want me to snap back And be like Oh nice cock man <laughs> Do you know what I mean I look at, like, what, like what do they want from me Let's like? hang out <laughs> I've also got them from the, from, the, from the opposite sex Yeah Got some fucking rank ones. Yeah, it's it's, t- it's terrible. I hate getting sent snaps of titties. Um, no, it's, it's it's weird. It's weird. It, it's and, and weird. if a girl sends you a picture of her titties, even if they're class, you're not going to be like, you know, I want to go out with her. Wow, yeah, you're the girl of my dreams. What's your name? Are you from round? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? What are you into? Pints. It's Fellas. weird. I, I, I've got sent on videos. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, don't go into I won't go into it, but they're very graphic. It put him off his breakfast. Yeah, put it that way. And I'll never forget it. It was a Sunday morning. I was hung over. And I tell you, that didn't help me in, 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 in any way. Fucking rank. So, it's such a weird opener. Yeah, like, hi, here's my genitals. And there's never even like a snappy caption with them or anything. It's just cock. Like. But people are strange and they are very forward, as we found out in Abu Dhabi. Oh, are we telling that story? Sure, why not? I was probably going to leave out the location. It's happened to us on our travels though Like people have um, Tried to solicit us for sex And have offered us Large amounts of money <laughs> And at, at, at the moment Of recording this podcast We've always turned them down Yes <laughs> But if we're you not, are <laughs> We're not a whore To corporate sponsors <laughs> It wasn't corporate sex It was individuals Yeah um, And that's very strange So I think there's There's a bit of a weird vibe Out there to To how to Get I, sex <laughs> Well, uh, sure. Look, we talked about the Instagram thing and all that, and people putting large parts of their bodies up for public display, yeah. mm. and you know, getting no money out of it, whatever. It's just pe- people are getting a bit looser in how they like. You know, people aren't as protective of how people see them. Yeah, but that's still a million miles away from here's me all black. Yeah, I do know. There was um. I went uh, a couple of months ago. I went on a date with a guy, and grand, lovely date. And then took it out of the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you girl! <laughs> and then a couple of nights later, he was out drunk, and he sent me a picture of his thing. So then I was just like, "Right, good luck, whatever." And like, I've gotten like four or five messages from him since, apologizing profusely and saying, "I'm really sorry, I was drunk." But I was like, "That's grand, but <laughs> I'm sorry." Yeah, you've gone past the point of rescue. How yeah. catch him stuff. Well, Mark, can we get him on the podcast? No, that might be awkward. Okay, but I really want to know why. If there's anybody oh, out I there, I can text him. 
and ask him why don't, he's saying don't he, poke the bear <laughs> <laughs> literally he'll poke back um, <laughs> but not, like, <laughs> with his knob <laughs> <laughs> also like also dicks aren't that pretty no, no they're not nice no you know like you walk into like if I worked with like <laughs> mechanics and garages and all that and lads would have like titty picks up you know yeah, yeah. some young one like, now Duckums is, do, do you remember them D-U-C-K-H-A-M-S you used to have like young one like fitting a fucking carburetor yeah. <laughs> like, yeah wearing a bikini like you know like or she'd have her bab out whatever but I, I've never <laughs> gone into like a hairdresser's and seen <laughs> some fellow with his lad out yeah in a cowboy hat they're no. not yeah. like they're not sexualised in that way I think like I not the, the scrotum must be the ugliest thing ever that's a bit harsh <laughs> it's not great no in fairness is it but like nobody has ever said oh show me show me your should clothing. be a nightmare clone for that there should be like a little a little cock sock yeah or like a bag a bag coat a little a, purse yeah a little coat for your bag like make it look nice I think there's glitter you can get to put on it uh, I'll stay away from the glitter I'm a mess <laughs> all over me helmets. Um or advice to men out there stop doing it Yes uh, I think if a lady Wants A picture of your genitals She'd probably let you know Yeah It'll, it'll surely build up to it We're not saying sexton's bad You know no. what I mean that, that that happens And things get a bit saucy by And it's probably a bit of crack Do you know what I mean but Yeah and Just only do sexton with somebody That you would trust Trust yes, not yeah. yes, yes. Because yeah. so many cases of that On the internet Revenge porn Like that's oh. serious Yeah so, Some fella is Like texting Snapchatting a girl in his class And he's like Go on Send his picture of you With your babs out Or in mm. your bra and then bang It's everywhere Yeah, It's yeah. everywhere yeah. You can't take it back Once it goes on the internet That's I don't know how many times We've said it on this podcast And I don't think people get Everything you send on the internet It's going somewhere Yeah Regardless of What platform Or where it is It's going somewhere Whether yeah. that's some Russian fucking corporation Getting pictures of your knob Or whatever But look It's going somewhere There's so many fake profiles out there Of like hot young ones There'll be someone Adding you every day And I bet you that young one exists but she's from like America or somewhere yeah. and some bot in the Middle East whatever has just taken her photos yeah, and is using it now. Yeah, 100%. So watch yourselves out there. That's our advice and stop sending unsolicited dick pics. Only if she really asks you for <laughs> it, <laughs> then send, on, send it on and get in a whopper and, and send it on. And ladies, don't feel bad. Yeah. Like the lady who's texting in, I think was kind of hinting at like, what am I doing to attract these? Mm. I really don't think she's doing nothing to attract no, them. It's no, it's just these animals are out there. And, yeah. that's, and that's the thing um, We love your feedback Get in touch lads To the podcast And let us know Your thoughts and dick pics Have you received <laughs> yeah. them By feedback I mean your yeah, thoughts don't. Not, your, not your dick pics mm. this, is a, this is a no cock zone We don't want to see any cocks Texts okay? Black and white <laughs> Te- Text feedback No pictures No pictures Alright we're going to round the podcast off As we always do With our yurts and dirts of the week um, I'm going to kick us off With my dirt of the week Go on Zin Junction 14 the other day now, You already know Johnny Because I came, yeah. out the, I came out to the car Like a dog There was Three cubicles Four urinals There was two empty urinals And then A fella just walked in Ahead of me And he went into the cubicle And he left the door open And just pissed in there <laughs> Right just, He was pissing And I was like Wow Why didn't you use The two urinals That are free mm. I need A number two you know, like that was why I was planning on going to, and I was waiting there and he just came out then, looked at me, didn't even wash his hands and walked out the door. Oh. Right, so it's bad enough, right, that he's already used used the cubicle mm. for number one. Or Unnecessarily. Not. Unnecessarily mm. is my point here. And if privacy was an issue, he'd have closed the fucking door, <laughs> which he didn't either. And obviously hygiene wasn't a problem because he walked out the door without washing his hands. And... When I went in then to the cubicle, I locked the door, obviously. I was going for number two. Piss all over the toilet seat. Oh, he didn't even lift up the toilet seat or nothing. Like, absolutely rank. So I was like a dog. And um, that really, really pissed me off. That's my dirty week, that oh, man. I feel like giving you a hug. Like. Yeah, what a horrible man, though. Yeah. Like, only, like, right. If you're only going to urinate. Oh, I feel and you, and you no, want to. I feel to, like we've covered this. Okay. Yeah, no. And you want to use the cubicle. Like, sometimes, fellas, like. To sit down and have a piss that's, Sit down we Yeah do you know Bit of comfort yeah. You might feel like that some days That's grand But going in Standing over it Bong out like And, and the door wide open like It's too when far the, When there's two urinals there yeah, It's too far a distance Yeah but it's not even that it's, There's it, it, two urinals right there Use the urinals That's me dirt of the week Right Jesus okay. I'm just gonna double Put up. the kettle on man I'm stressed out there now Well 
I've got something to make you feel better here. Because uh, on my day off there two weeks ago, I went to Blarney Castle. If you've bought me something, lad, I'll fall down. I've bought you something. Okay, this is... I got us all coasters of the family names on them. That's actually... I can't believe he just bought some. Oh, my God. For, for another human. Wow. <laughs> so I want That's you to read that one. I've got Mars on here. I'm going to take it out. Do you want me to read this out? Go on, read it out there, yeah. So this is my uh, coaster with my, my family crest on it, MacMahon. The name MacMahon derives from the Irish word for bear. Oh, who? The MacMahons of Oriel were the paramount clan in Monaghan from the 13th century till almost 1700. There was a second notable MacMahon chieftain whose line descended from the Kings of Tormund at Corcobaskin in West Clare. Famous bears of the name include Patrick MacMahon, a president of France. No oh, way. And the location given is County Fermanagh and County Clare, and the motto is Sic nos sic sacra timor ourselves and things sacred we guard class no. that's deadly that, 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 do you know what that's actually a good present I'm going to use that for the rest, so, rest um, of this podcast I couldn't get a fey one so I got fahi and I scratched out the H Cheers. so we're just gonna <laughs> I knew it was too good to be true <laughs> so I'm just gonna, actually two coasters I'm just, I'm just gonna you wanna pass that over to Mara thank there? you very much you that's wanna, lovely thank you um, no Mara and of awesome. course I got I got myself the O'Brien one which is my name which is uh, the, the three lines no relation to the, the English course from descends from Brian Brew. Whoa. A very Whoa. interesting man, Brian Brew. We'll get to him some other day. The Fahi family crest is a dog with a sword going through. That's well, interesting. That's, that's them Fahis. <laughs> that's They're them. a wild bunch. Yeah, They're no, a wild bunch. The Fahi I know is a vet. It could be, <laughs> could be in, in the blood. It could be him. Uh, Johnny, yeah, that was your that was your yurt. Have you got a dirt? Uh, no, just I have to help you out on, on lads not washing their hands. I used to play in a a band and I was in pubs and in nightclubs and in hotels all the time totally sober mm. and every gig I saw a lad going in and out without washing his hands and just come on we're better than that yeah my my yurt of the week was we got a day of sunshine Yay, yesterday yeah. and I just we were driving up the car and it was like everything feels good the sun lasts around the tunes were blaring everybody seemed that bit happier good weather come at us boy mm-hmm. rag week rag week as well ah, rag week's great Raise and give rag week. I don't know if they raise any money, but it's some crack. <laughs> I tell you what, they raise hell. Hell yeah. Yeah, and and like they just give hangovers. So to anyone who's shook now from rag week last week, relax, lads. You know it's only once a year. You can gear up to it now again next yeah. year. Go. And there's footage of us singing on our Instagram now. Yeah, rag so week. check our Instagram out. That's it for this week. We'll be back next week, same time, same channel. From me, Johnny oh, Spence. Hey, I've actually got a treat for you. I've got a song. Oh wow, we. Yeah, wait, hear this. Do you want to play us out, sir? I'll play, yeah. yeah Lovely. Wait. All right, so for me, Johnny Smacks. For me, Mora. For me, Johnny B. Uh, one microphone, Lumi, hang on. Yeah, they were lovely. They were lovely, okay, hang on. All right, so this came about because um, we were on the road doing our tour, and we had uh, our crew, of course, as we alluded to, our, <laughs> our crew were all pretty young ladies. <laughs> Who happen to be very talented at their job as well, but they're all young ones. And you make it sound like we've got an entourage of forty people. We don't. There's a few. Okay, but they were talking about um, Taylor Swift. Yeah. And I was like, I don't like her. And then we got into an argument. And then they were like, She's got loads of good songs. Her old stuff is really good. So they played me the song. I was like, It's actually not bad. So I've kind of done my own little version of it. Oh Jesus. Taylor Swift. Okay. I can remember how it goes now. I remember this now, hang on. You're on the phone with your boyfriend. He's upset. He's pure tick about something that you said. He'll never get the crack like I do. I'm in the pub, it's a typical Friday night Your lad comes in, he's locked, he starts a fight He's always acting the bollocks around town He's got his name stitched on his t-shirt Played County Minor and I'm Junior B I'm waiting for the day that you'll wake up and find What you're looking for has been here the whole time If you could see that I'm the one who understands you Been here all along, why can't you see You belong with me, you belong with me Walk in the streets with you, head to toe O'Neill's I can't help thinking this is how it ought to be Here comes your lad in a tight t-shirt 
and it's fucking freezing and you've got an arse on real it's in the best in the town but you go drinking blue wicked till you fall down what are you doing with a guy like that i saw him shifting some bure out back he's got a shed full of green diesel played county minor and i'm junior b i'm waiting for the day you wake up and find Fuck that prick with his short back and sides If you could see that I'm the one who understands you Been here all along, why can't you see You belong with me Saturday he lands at your back door He only cares about his whole KD You belong with me belong with me wow that is that that was <laughs> serenading at of the top quality right from all of us in the podcast we'll be back next week same time go on good luck, good luck. bye bye